We are here once again with legendary strength coach Dan John with a new pair of shades. Oh, and, no, these, uh, I've had these a long time. I haven't seen them in a while. This a uh, couple of years ago, it was the big thing that you were, we're all getting too much blue light, you know? That's and, right. Yeah, uh, I have those lenses in here. Apparently, these are, they yeah. filter that, whatever. They and uh, I was watching a, a video with a kind of a fitness guru. And he was wearing these because he didn't want, he didn't want the light from the computer to destroy his uh, hormone levels or something like that. Right. So, yeah. Well, you could always eat a few more Brazil nuts. Or the, is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, geez, you know. <laughs> Get with the times. What's Sorry, so man, I got, I got good? You. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Well, We're doing four hour body. Uh, it's like he just, uh, he had drug like responses from eating. Uh, it was Brazilian nuts. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty Brazil sure. Nuts, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, they had their moment. Brazil nuts had their 15 minutes of fitness fame yeah. at some point. So, Good to see you, Dan. Good to see everybody here. We're doing live Q&A, so drop whatever questions you have, and we will attend to them presently. In the meantime, Dan, how has your week been? How has your training been? All that good stuff. Jeez. Uh, okay. um, so, you know, I, I chart two things uh, closely, my body weight, uh, and, and my body weight because I want to live a long time, uh, which ties me into something else. Uh, and then the other thing, I, I just had the best month of my career uh, financially. Amazing. Amazing. And my body weight is down and it's like the old New York socialite once said, you can't be too rich or too skinny. Mm. And so, uh, you know, I'm just a rail now. I'm just, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I be barely even fit on the screen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I see a new book, uh, Dan yeah, John's book. Guide to Being Rich and Skinny. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Saturday I went in and uh, I did my pre-need care for my funeral, which, uh, and it's funny because I was able to get through the whole thing kind of professionally without even it. And then, then she asked a good question. What do you want? It would, what, what do you want at the graveside? And I tell you, man, that was a punch in the chest. Uh, that was, yeah. a, but uh, I, uh, both daughters, I wouldn't say they were angry, but it was like, ah, dad, why are you doing that? And both independently about a day or so later called and said, I'm so glad you're taking care of this. Um, you know, you initial what you want and you sign what you want. You initial yeah. And what's nice about that is that people will swoop in. It's weird how people will swoop in at a funeral and not only want money and stuff, but also want to have their say in what happens to the. I've seen it. The yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's, so, folks, if you're over, I don't know, maybe 40, even, uh, uh, you can even do it for free at many of the mortuaries. It might be a real valuable thing for some of you. It, like life insurance, it's one of those things we don't really need. Don't don't want to think about it, but do the responsible thing. But right? yeah, I yeah. Mean, you know, like you, I think what you're 21 or whatever with 12 yeah. kids, yeah. 19. Yeah, yeah, you might. Yeah, that's something you probably want to. Uh, yeah, you probably. Yeah, I mean, the hour would be worth the hour. It's an investment, uh, and I'm a big believer, folks. And I think you get you get a sense of that. Uh, I don't like to uh, if I can do something now. And it makes my life easier, someone else's life easier. Do it now, you know. Yep. Uh, that's the old time management system from Lou Holtz, who's kind of a weirdo, but you know, the, I, it, it's called DIN. Do it now. Do it now. I like yeah. it. And so, yeah. So that was interesting. Uh, trainings really went well. Uh, I'm experimenting with this military press program, mm. new book, and uh, yeah, it's good. We'll see. Groovy. Awesome. Well, let's get to questions right away then. I see lots of good stuff is yeah, happening in the chat already. So let's get to it. Uh, Anthony, hello. Samuel, hello. Hello to everybody. Lots of hellos. Good. Now let's find a question here. Tom yeah. has a question. Tom says, hey, when doing a single kettlebell front squat, what should you do with your non-weight holding hand? Ah, yes. What do you do with the awkward free hand, Dan? Yes, this is a problem for many people in swings and squats. What do we do with this hand? It's just there, right? Yeah. I mean, generally, it's just don't you just kind of hang it out forward, like kind of just. Ah, uh, yeah. Often, I will just put it as a sort of. I'll. I will just kind of jut it straight out a lot of times with the, yeah. the squat. I, I I think the reason I do it, and maybe I don't know if I coach it this way, but. It, I think it does help keep the chin sternum zipper line. So that's a real big thing for me on single side stuff, uh, Tom, is that your chin, your sternum, and your zipper stay in a straight line. So if my zipper's uh, here and I'm starting to tilt away, uh, then I, I, I stop the lift. 
but I think this actually works as kind of a like a snow plow. Uh, I, uh, that's the ski um, for skiing. Um, you know, when you ski, you, you go pizza slice, French fries, pizza slice. It's like a it's like a snow. It's it's a so if my hand is here, I think it keeps me straighter. I I don't know if it's true. If it works, Again, it works. I do see a lot of people do this. at certain uh, some of the trainers they have this hand off like this, like they're you know they're. They're, they're starting their their uh you know uh swan ballet swan routine yeah right yeah yeah with the bullshore ballet i, I don't know I don't. <laughs> yeah it's usually it's usually the one arm swing you know people just like don't know what to do with that hand and it, oh, you know, they, it almost looks like that's it that you see that off the arm weirdest off. thing you'll see the weirdest just yeah just the, the the hand should just go along for the ride for the one arm swing yeah, on you know, one arm swing, back forward like, back forward right yeah i teach the touch the bell yeah because that keeps you square at the top when you, you give that yeah. little tap of the bell at the top that's a good it's a good and it's just what it does is it stops you from doing all that extra i mean if, if you're doing one hand swings uh great uh but uh there it, there it always looks to me like some people are one step from a a disaster you know when i see all that <laughs> movement going around you know you want to look cool you don't want to look goofy yeah. when you're this is a no goofy zone there's a no goofy well, no goofy you do you i mean that's true though right like you want to look like you have confidence in movement. There's nothing wrong with that. And hopefully it's because you do have confidence in the movement. If you, if you look goofy, it's probably because there's, you just haven't, you just haven't spent enough time with that particular exercise. Right. So yeah, we, we can't allow people should pay attention to goofiness. We shouldn't allow it. I'm telling you. Band band. Jason says, I heard Dan talk about combining easy strength with original strength. That got me experimenting with farmer's walks backwards and then he references this knees over toes guy i don't i still don't know who that guy is i have to i'm <laughs> actually so out of the loop on the fitness industry it took me forever to get caught up on liver king and i hope he's doing well it's been a minute since i checked in on our old friend the king there um anyway uh well, and so jason you know, asked about other combos between easy strength and original strength if you like uh, uh, jason i'm concerned i mean what I would do if I were you is I would walk backwards on a balance beam doing farmer walks while juggling uh, suitcase carries. Uh, just, I, I don't think there's any problem. I Out here, in fact, that's my uh, sprint area right back, right as I'm looking at my window. Uh, I, I backpedal and do, in track and field, it's called AB skips or B skips, um, where as my knee comes up, my opposite hand touches it. Uh, but that's because I have uh, titanium hips, and so that's my sprint workout. But I mean, remember, knees over toes, guy. Nothing new under the sun. Uh, that stuff's been around for years. Uh, you'll find the bulk of it in Dardick's book. You'll you'll find it in Iron Man magazine back in the '60s. Uh, I mean, what a name! Like of all the names that would stick, the knees over toes guy. I just yeah. I have to like Google this. Yeah. But the other thing about this, uh, actually, I don't mind the question. Uh, there are some things we do, like with one hand presses, like doing one handed presses just by picking one foot up is kind of a fun little drill. If you have something like a med ball or even a basketball or something like that, if you put while you're doing presses, you put your foot on a ball, you can learn some really interesting things. And, and, and don't think of it as a balance exercise. I, I can understand why you would. And I think it's true. I think there's a, a balance. But the other thing you'll notice, if you have a foot on a basketball or you have a foot in the air while you press or even pull, you you really get a sense of how you need to have this area of body, your core, your column, whatever you want to call it, uh, from neck to knees, how, how locked and loaded it has to be if you have a foot on like a basket, anything that moves around there's those, they used to have those wobbly boards in gyms. I don't know if they still do, but they, so yeah, there, there's other things you can do. Um, I do like, actually, I don't mind your idea of backward farmer walks, but I would add one more thing, do them up hills in that little uh, horseshoe muscle around your knee. Mm. will tell you why it's better than knee ex uh, leg extensions for that area. Uh, if you ever want your your knee muscles, and you know, guys all know what I'm talking about, that big mm -hmm. teardrop. You know when you feel it, right, yeah. Walk backward, farmer walks up a hill, or, or drag a sled backwards, does the same thing. Uh, we, we first started doing that at Discus Camp, oh, God, 20-plus years ago now. It was a long time ago. 
and we were doing it for some of our female athletes who uh, who played basketball and volleyball, and their knees were always barking. And uh, it was it was a great tonic, and maybe even long term, maybe even a maybe even prevented some damage to their to their to their knees. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Okay. Let's uh, let's keep rocking and rolling. Uh, Samuel says, Dan, big fan of your works. I recently investigated Mass Made Simple Light. Is that what that acronym stands for? I, I think. Yeah. M M S Light. Yeah, it's an article I wrote for T Nation because they didn't want. It's funny. I sent the article in. And I don't. I, I'd have to talk to TC or Chris if because I don't remember the whole story. But they didn't like uh, my six week mass made simple program, which originally I was going to publish with uh, T Nation and just make it a online free, you know, whatever article. But they didn't want it, and so I said, "Hell!" And then I turn it into. The, by the way, which. Uh, sells better than any of my books with on target in the last few couple of years, which makes me laugh because jokes you know, on them hard book. I mean, the programs are uh, mass made simple light was just uh, uh, a follow up article. Uh, you asked how I progress on it. Yeah. So his question, let me finish the question. So he, he, he likes this, the look of it, and he wants to know how you would progress it if at all with kettlebells and body weight for a home version. Oh, Oh, I didn't realize. Oh, with body weight kettle? No, it's not a body weight. Well, I mean, you could you could do the exercises, but I, I'm not going go to not gonna get the outcome that you want with yeah, that. Yeah, Samuel, uh, I'll go to my death trying to figure out why people think that body weight is a way to build mass. Yeah, you, know, you know, I get. You know, everyone's going to bring up the gymnastics thing. Um, I know a number of really well. I used to know a number of really good gymnasts. Uh, yes, they are shredded they're ripped to the bone but they're also very very small uh you know um it, you and know, that, could, yeah it, if yeah if i could just because julian says how would you train a gymnast approach oh uh, is, is weightlifting beneficial for calisthenics based sports like high level gymnastics? let me say a few words about gymnastics right so first off right if you just want to build muscle don't do gymnastics because to, to get to the point where you're going to, you know, have the adequate tension to even facilitate this sort of muscle. Like you're already going to have exploded your joints and you're going to have to have like sunk many, many years into high level techniques that you are just never going to be able to do starting at age 47 years old. It's just, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. going to happen. Yeah. It is a waste of time. It is a waste of time. If all you want to do is look better and feel better, just put the, you know, put the Olympic dream aside. I don't mean to discourage anybody. Put it aside and just go do some good old fashioned weightlifting, right? Like, if you just want to look good, you want to be lean, you want to feel good. I get it. Gymnastics is cool. I've toyed around with a few things myself. It's very, very, very tough. Even the basics are really, really, really hard to do well. If you're trying to do gym, and I, I suck at them. Even we're just talking about like the bare bones basics of gymnastics. I suck at them. Right. So just the, the rate of return versus the initial investment for somebody who just wants to build muscle. It's like it's one of those things. Dan, like, can you dig a hole with a spoon? Yeah, but there's like a backhoe right over there. So why don't you just go? Why don't you just go use that? Right. He has a follow up. But I do want to make a quick point. Mm -hmm. When Chris Summers book first uh, finally came out about his uh, gymnastics, I remember someone telling me they were like, uh, I got the book, but it's like he in one of his exercises, there are 17 progressions up to the movement. And he said, I tried the first one and I couldn't do it. And I was like, yeah, gymnastics is really hard. You know, yeah. our <laughs> it's really hard. if you want to be a gymnast, you need to do gymnastics. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Right. But if you just want to look and feel good, you do not need gymnastics. And I would generally discourage that as being a primary training approach for most people you know, when our brothers and sisters from the uh, workout that shall not be named uh, fell in love with the muscle up uh, i i talked to in fact uh, in about oh gosh about an hour and a half i'll be with uh, these we have a very strong uh university here gymnastics team and i work with four of the young ladies uh we're don't you know, know the school, but they're very famous. And for those of you from Utah, you know they rock. And one of the things I'll talk, I talked to them about a muscle up one time, and they were like, 
They didn't even know what the term was. Yep. They didn't know and, it had a term because all it was was getting yourself up on the bar. Yeah. And and no, and nobody does a muscle up at CrossFit like a, a gymnast does a muscle up. So like two points about that. But the muscle up is about as far as I got with with you know gymnastic yeah. stuff. But the muscle up isn't even really a gymnastic. It's like oh, it's like a it's, setup. It's not it's even. Not a, even a, it was, it's just it like, like this is own. like learning to. It's not even a real thing. Like this is just what they do to set up for yeah. the actual moves, right? So, so Dan, <laughs> at a track meet, I noticed that you walk into the discus ring. Can you go over the technique on walking into the discus ring? It's yeah, so okay. They, they, they call my name, and, I, and I, <laughs> I get my discus, and then I and then I walk into the ring. Yeah. So exactly what do you – can you write this up into a, a – a, would you mind doing a cert on how you do that? Well, no. You see, I'm just – I get my discus. So you get the discus. So let's organize this, okay? And now <laughs> – it's like putting my strings on the guitar, you know. Yeah. Just like, this isn't even like the real so now, thing, right? Yeah. Five years later, we have a chief instructor, you know. Uh, we have masters, we have seniors, you know. We have to, you know. So, so you're not, and then someone will come up to you at the certain go, "You're not worthy to even pick up the discus." It's yeah, yeah. So sometimes, folks, yeah, I tell this to people all the time. Don't ever, I'll use the word mess, but never mess in another person's game. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned this working with a, another Utah professional sport here. And I went, to, I was out on the court with one of the guys. And he goes, take a shot. And I went to take the shot. And he knocked that ball about 99 rows up in, in the bleachers. And then he went, you know, because I made fun of him for not being very strong. And then he re basically reminded me of, don't mess in my game. I, yeah. you know, that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. It's good to have those, those lessons every now and then, right? All right. Yeah. All right good question. We gave a direct answer. You get what you get here. I, I, yeah, Joshua says, hey, I never get the chance to watch live and comment, but just wanted to say thank you guys so much. I've learned so much about life from these weekly talks. Joshua. Great to have you here, Joshua. Thank you. Great to have thank you, you so really much. Uh, you. Josh, I hope you're on uh, – uh, I hope you follow Pat's materials too, and I hope you uh, buy my – I mean, uh, follow my materials too. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the things I'm starting to get a, a sense of um, – a lot of people use my free materials, but you know what? They check, they get them, but they don't use them. So, uh, thank you for what you're saying here, and I I hope you're you're not just listening to it, but but actually applying these things. Do, do a long things. way to get to my point, but I, I that's do good. I yeah. Aviche says, "Hey, when training at home, uh, I'm sorry. Let me read it correctly. When training home trainee, it only has kettlebells, a male." Do you have other ideas beside heavy bands wrapped underneath the bells for a deadlift? Okay, so the question is, how do you how do you try to approximate a deadlift with a kettlebell? Is, is I think what the question is. You swing. You you, you do swings. I don't. Every the time end of that force velocity spectrum. There you go. You know, I'm almost to the point. Even at certs, I mean, like at the last cert, I guess I taught the kettlebell deadlift, but honestly i teach it more like a, the deficit deadlift now more than anything because the kettlebell deadlift doesn't lend itself to a good kettlebell swing it's the uh, spoon and shovel and backhoe you know thing too oh, like, yeah you uh, can't you can deadlift the kettlebell but it, it's, it's not the right not, tool it's not uh, a great tool you just it's going to be so hard to get the load you need for a actually worthwhile deadlift the kettlebell yeah so. one thing i am working on i don't know how good it is but from the deficit deadlift, uh, my, and that probably is a good option for a lot of the listeners. Uh, you're going to put your feet up on boxes or feet up on blocks or something like that. And then, but as you do, as you go down, you drive your chin forward as far as you can and you let your hands slide towards your heels. And when you feel those hamstrings get absolutely as tight as you can, then you, you, come back up you you uh like a crane you uh, and you come back down it's good i think it's good for a hamstring flexibility mobility i think it trains things well but i mean it's just not it's just not a deadlift you know i mean i mean it's not i mean doing a 50 pound deadlift for a male you know that's i don't know how much you work you can get out of that yeah yeah uh jb has a question what kettlebell exercises can I do every day? Swings, carries. Yeah, those are, those would be the two. There you go. Yeah, we should... Goblet squat. 
I mean, the 10,000 swing challenge, you can do it in 20 days. I have. I mean, it sucks. You get kind of bored. And frankly, it's it, the hardest thing about the, doing the 10,000 swing challenge in 20 days is the fact that when you get to Friday, you, you got to roll out of bed on Saturday. When you get to Saturday, you got to roll out on Sunday. And it's just, it just gets, but you can, and you, you can do anything. I, I, I generally think you're, you max around five days a week of swings generally three to five times a week for loaded carries, but yeah, you can do them every day. Sure. Yeah. Good. Runners right. run, throwers throw. Runners run through. Let me hit a follow up with Julian here. Cause he, about the gymnastics thing, he said, not talking about training gymnastics. He wanted to know how a couple days a week at the gym might serve someone who is a high level gymnast already. And, and my, right, so I've, I've never trained a gymnast, but my guess is probably not right. If, if somebody is a high level you know, like they need to be reserved. He's a high level calisthenics expert or athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I would want to know how many high level gymnasts do additional strength and weight training. My, my, my initial guess is probably very few or very little, right? Because there's yeah. already so much tension and, and stuff. And the added the, mass would probably get in and, and the added mass and the muscle fatigue no. would just be counterproductive. Right. If all you do is body weight exercise, uh, calisthenics, then the two exercises I'd recommend in the gym would be the probably the a squat family and a deadlift family, uh, because those everybody says you can get all this work done with body weight exercises, and and I think it's true, but you know, you know you can do five hundred air squats, but don't equate that to a five hundred. It's just not going to be the same. Yeah, if you're just like doing a lot of calisthenics for general fitness, then I agree you can, and I think should add some, you know, loaded exercises. Uh, I think it will fill, you know, everything's, everything, just be honest with you guys, everything has gaps, right? There's no perfect, the kettlebell has gaps. We've talked about the gaps with the kettlebells before, you know, vertical pulling, you don't get a whole lot of feet and ankles. So the kettlebell has gaps, the deadlift, the kettlebell, that's it. That's yeah, a gap. Yeah. Kettlebell checks, the kettlebell checks a ton of boxes. It's a huge bang for buck, but there are a few areas where it's like, yeah, let's just use this other thing. Let's just fill this gap with this other thing. So, Everything yeah. has everything has gaps, and it's just about trying to, uh, you know, fill those gaps with the appropriate supplementation. Fact, too, uh, Patrick, as many of you are hearing, is quoting uh, the philosopher Rocky Balboa from the original uh, movie uh, Rocky, 1975. Okay. I got That's gaps. Film. She's got gaps. Together, we fill gaps. That's beautiful. I mean, poetry. why does anybody even remember Shakespeare after that? I mean. <laughs> Surrelative. Sorry, I, I, I'll, I'll need a moment. <laughs> I was sad to see that Carl Weathers pass away. God rest. Yes, him. yes, yes, yes. Oakland Raider, and uh, it seemed uh, Vince he trained at Vince's gym for years. Oh, did he really? Uh, Interesting. Uh, so, getting back on that calisthenic thing, it, it almost turns you to Phil Maffetone's uh, weight training for golfers. You, you do a set of five in the squat. You do a set of five in the deadlift. Five squat. Five deadlift squat. You know, that might be a real good ex thing, too. Um, I, I do like the fact um, that you talked about uh, <clears throat> the gaps thing. You know, I'm working on uh, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with with this new uh, kind of bodybuilding book I'm putting together is even if I recommend something as simple as uh, pull-ups or hangs, I'll get 300 emails that say, I don't have a pull-up, I don't have a hang. Uh, so... Even what I consider like a normal home gym, it most people don't have. Hey, can I show you something cool I just put together this week? Yeah, show, show, show and share. Hey, uh, a field trip, kids. So y'all know the office, right? Mm -hmm. That's my baby. That's Coach Mon. That's a great book. Mm -hmm. My chest set. My helmets. That's my high school football helmet. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. If you're just listening to the podcast, head over to YouTube for a real There's treat. We're getting a Cribs edition of Dan John There's right the now. Sauna, but this is really cool, okay? So yeah, I got this? these from uh, – oh, shoot. I got these from uh, the Bosco series. So these are the original training templates from the oh, Bosco. Oh, look at that. What is that? That's in the bathroom? I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's my bathroom. That's great. That's great. And then oh. – I love cool? the I love the uh, the characters there. That's uh, yeah, that's Bosco. Uh, that's Bosco. Okay, these are from Harry Pascal's uh, Bosco books. 
Yeah, old school, and, old school strongman build there. I like yeah, it. Uh, and a funny thing is, this is, I always thought this was interesting. Whenever I read Bosco, I'm always a little freaked out because um, I didn't read the books, uh, Harry Pascal's works, until yeah, just a couple of years ago. I haven't read them. But it is exactly how I coach people, Patrick. Hmm. And the weird thing is this. The week I was born, Harry Pascal died. So oh. I've always wondered if we kind of went, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of high five. Yeah, I just slapped on the way in and out. Yeah. Right. That's great. <laughs> That's cool. I need to get some stuff like that for my bathroom. You know, Julian said it's a fact. You memorize the things on your bathroom wall. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's a hack. That is a life hack right there. You spend you know time what? just looking at the walls in the bathroom. You put some stuff, put the periodic table on there, and you'll be an expert in no time. Well, I mean, on the back of my journal, I have my pirate map. On the back of my computer, I have my pirate map. Things you see are things you do, you know? Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Julian. That's re- I mean, that's really a good point. That is, yeah. Deck out your bathroom walls. All right, let's uh, scroll back up here. Lots of great. Keep them coming today, guys. Really appreciate it. Lots I've of good got stuff. Joel is, 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 is talking to us from Wales. I have been to Wales, uh, and I enjoyed it. Joel, one of my favorite stories in my life, there was a trivia contest at a bar in your capital, and my team took third place, which is impressive. What's most impressive is the fact that uh, the questions were asked in Welsh. And uh, so we had a guy at the table try to interpret. But you know what won it for us, Joel? There was a whole section on America. Ah. Crush that. Boom, boom, boom. They said, what is the boiling point in Fahrenheit? And the whole, the whole, you could just hear, hear the That's whole bar funny. go, what the ah. hell is Fahrenheit? You could just hear everybody just complain about the yeah, So it was funny. Yeah. When will they world learn? When will they ever learn? All right, Edward Edward says, "Hey, we're doing the gloop loop clamshell, 15, 14, 13, and so on. Hit the glute and hit better than just doing 100 thrusts and 50 clams. Is uh, there a difference?" Yeah, in my experience, yes, Edward, because the that little tiny I hate to call it a rest, but it's a rest. In fact, Almost the minute I hang up here, I'll be out in my uh, gym. I'll be doing the 15, 15. Uh, so, uh, Patrick, 15 hip, hip thrusts, 15 clamshells, 14, 14, 13, 13, 12, 12. Mm. Uh, 11 burn burn, it, burn it up. burns. Burn and it once up. you get to five, it's almost worthless. But, yeah, it's still mm-hmm. fun. But just finish it. But, uh, yeah, I, I have tried it both ways. And I, I have I have really found that there's – you you want – I think it's better now in your case doing that number maybe uh i think i think it's gone but i would just maybe say uh like 15 hip thrust 10 clamshells if you did that for 10 rounds that was that would be tough i would be i i wouldn't be able to keep track of the rounds because you know i'm not i get uh distracted uh when i'm working out so i always like to have uh, the, 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 the countdown 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Cause otherwise I'll forget what I'm doing. And I'll, I'll start. Mike Brown makes fun of me in the middle of a workout. It, Mike Brown, will, like, you know, I'll start rearranging the hammers or I'll start re you know, I'll start, you know, yeah, not, not proud of that. Yeah. Good. Steven says, I asked how often you can do the clean cardio workout last week. I remember that question. How many times a week? Could one do the humane burpee? I'm thinking about alternating between them three times a week for a while. Is this appropriate, Dan? Yeah, I think the most I've done the humane burpee for, and for those of you, I, I gotta hate to do this. Hang on just for a sec, Pat. So 15 swings, 10 goblet squats, 10 push ups, 15 swings, 9 9, 15 8 8, all the way down to 15 1 1. Okay. So 150 swings, 55 goblet squats, 55 push ups. Uh, I've done it twice. I know it's been a while because Mark was here with us and, you know, I mean, he's been married and has two kids now. So it's been a while since I've done it twice a week for a while. Uh, generally, I see the Humane Burpee as a, a once a week program. Uh, here, if you, I mean, if you want to do a Dan John fun week, do cardio clean, humane burpee, and then the ABC workout. Do hmm. pick, you know? I don't care what days of the week you do it. Um, you'll be getting you'll be getting a lot of work, and you'll be doing you'll be doing a lot of you'll be doing a lot of squats. But it, it I think that's doable. I think it's repeatable. 
uh, and I would even say uh, oddly fun. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Good. All right. Arigit says, and sorry for my pronunciation if that is incorrect, but the question is this. What is the best kept exercise for developing chest, back, bicep, and tricep muscles? Uh, what is useful for the lat, for the lats, uh, and what are the best exercises for the lower body? So it kind of just kind of wants the roadmap here of kettlebell exercises for various body parts. Dan, is this? But no, that, let's have you answer. That's Frankenstein monster training. That's something I don't. Yeah, you know, I'm, Dan and I generally like to think in terms of movement patterns more so than isolated yeah. muscles. But uh, I will do. I'll do my best to answer your question here. Uh, chest is chest itself is a bit of a gap with kettlebells. It is, uh, Dan, I know is a fan. And I think this is a good one. The single arm kettlebell press on a bench, but there's nothing like super special about the kettlebell there. I mean, you can use it if you want, like same thing. If you're going to do uh, people like the floor press, if you're going to do floor press, I recommend uh, bridging the hips up a little bit, increases the range of motion. So I would say if you're going to use a kettlebell, then if you're going to do the chest, yeah, the best. I guess it's maybe those two exercises, but the, the military press, it's going to hit, it's going to hit the upper chest, you know, so that, that it doesn't, um, doesn't miss that. And then, you know, you're getting your triceps and all that in there. Um, I don't really curl kettlebells, but I think the cleans and the snatches and stuff really do give, uh, some, some useful hits to your, to your biceps. And technically and, the clean is a better, uh, bicep exercise than the curl. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it makes you work, uh, three of the four, um, jobs of the bicep I mean, yep yeah i agree i mean i just think just doing a lot of cleans and the heavier cleans it does a lot it does a lot for the biceps yeah and then you know i'm a yeah, i'm, I'm every, a pull up i'm a pull up guy so it's, uh, if you ask about lats and biceps i mean i just do i think pull ups are great i was just in the bathroom showing you guys uh bosco's training right and uh even with Bosco, you know, you if you ask this question with those those barbell programs, there's if you think muscles, there's always going to be gaps in your training. Uh, and let me re reiterate what I tell my throwers, my athletes, anybody, my clients: there are not 600 muscles in the body. There's one muscle subdivided into 600 parts. Mm -hmm. If you're deadlifting, I'll tell you something. You know, I remember when I was pulling those big deadlifts as a when young. Yeah, uh, I was sore in places that had nothing to do with the deadlift and, and it just, it just highlighted where I was weak. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm such a big fan of the snatch grip deadlift with the barbell, mm -hmm. uh, you know, wide grip collar to collar because it just exposes. And that's part of my armor building training is it exposes those weak links. Weirdly the lat. Now who, who would have thought the deadlift would be a lat exercise? Well, if you do snap wide grip, snatch grip deadlifts, <laughs> you you will yeah, discover on. that it is right yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I used to do them in the mid threes for you know sets of five mm, when I was mm -hmm. in junior college and, and i'd stand up and it'd be like what is that and it'd be that you know this it'd be this area that this little you know area here it, it's kind of like the opposite you know like when someone benches for the first time in a long time you got press right there when yet this was here it killed me it just just was like a hot zone of trigger points there yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah. <clears throat> truth is if you stick to the kettlebell basics the single and the double you're going to hit pretty much all the stuff that most people want to hit and then and then figure out what gaps you need to fill dan's got That's, his little protein what is that protein drink you have there this dan? is the one i was telling you about from that little uh store near my house called uh costco oh yeah that little family this is the one Dick Notmeyer recommended to me yeah so Dick Notmeyer is 95 years old and still telling me uh, to uh, what brands of protein to buy. It's called, I mean, do you want to see, do you want to go on another road trip? Yeah. Let me just show, you, show yeah. you guys folks something I think adults should do besides mm -hmm. read books. And, you know, like, I, I get my Brazil nuts from Costco. Let it be known. Oh, and that's why you're so... That's okay, why so, so folks, vibrant. That's why, I have so, that's, why, that's why I have so many children, Dan. It's the Brazil ah. nuts. So what I do when I go to Costco, can you guys see all that? There's, so I got premium yeah, protein. Me, yeah, let's read some of it out for people who are just listening. You got the protein shakes. That is, what is the brand of that for people? Who that are one's Premier. Okay, they can send us a check for advertising. Premier. This one's Kirkland's protein. These aren't bad. Uh, these aren't. Uh, yeah, they are. Those, those are protein. The, the Costco brand protein bars. Okay, yeah. that's good. And then this is something called simple. Those are those those little dishwasher pods. Do you eat those too, Dan? I yes. Well, yeah, because I'm an idiot. 
little and then pre-workout. Yep. More, then I bought two more cases of this Orgain stuff. Orgain, and that's a plant protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, one thing I and there's you know, you know, I got all this. Yeah, you got some Clorox bleach. You have everything to make a high quality potent protein shake there. Some towels, a little fiber. There's there's a, a one off that uh, when San Francisco was doing its bid for the Olympics. It didn't get them, but it's that's one of a kind. There's not very many of those in the world. Interesting. Um, uh, so, yeah. So one of the things I want folks to know is, did you guys notice the volume of stuff? I The volume of packets I bought, because if I'm doing an experiment, uh, I don't like to do like don't like if I taste this right now. OK, OK. Ugh, it's terrible. OK. One and done, I'm fine with that. But if you're gonna do a, if you're gonna do an experiment with protein or, oh, just about anything, I, I think it's helpful to buy enough. I'll explain it this way. I've had people say, "I'm gonna start eating more pro. I'm gonna start eating four eggs for breakfast every day." Good. So how many eggs did you buy? A dozen. And my response is always, "Then this isn't gonna work. Why? Well, because." Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, now you're out of eggs. You know, you know, three by four. So I always believe that if you're going to try an experiment, have enough, have enough so that you can really follow it through without having to engage your free will or anything. So yes, I, yes. Set the environment up for success. My set friend. the environment up, set up your systems for success. Yeah. I love it. Great. Getting a lot of cool show and share today yeah. apparently it's called show and share these days as i've learned with my children things not show and tell anymore all right here we go um all right erigit has a follow-up wants to know hey what safety measures should be incorporated to prevent back injuries while doing the kettlebell moves dan do we have a checklist here well, proper technique you know appropriate I, mean, I, I think it starts when you uh, approach the bell i mean mm -hmm. i i mean I can't believe how haphazardly uh, people who consider themselves kettlebell experts will pick up a bell on a demonstration. It is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I always think you walk up to the bell. You, I, I like to get about uh, that far, uh, uh, that far away. And I put my hands on it. I tilt it back. I sit into a hinge, make sure my chin's up, my butt's back. I make sure my hamstrings are feeling something and then I slide the bell back and then I, I start. Uh, I, I, and then when I finish, I say, I always put it down like a professional. Um, you hinge, you drop it, and then you get back in that starting position. Um, again, I tell people this all the time. It looks like I'm exaggerating all this and I'm putting on a show. I know this. I know this from my post uh, Middle Eastern experiences. I come home. I've got that. Uh, I don't. I don't know what swear word to put in front of it. Darn liver parasite. I lose all that weight. I I move. I move Jones. Uh, she was the Joan Dunn. She was our secretary. She asked me to move her typewriter. I pick it up and my lower back goes out. Mm -hmm. a year plus for it to come back it was like i got hit by a bolt of lightning in my mid back and it would it it just was a knot there was ugh. once you've Nasty. hurt your back seriously you know you're i wouldn't i'm i am i mean i'm i'm fairly fearless but once you hurt your back seriously those little things become oh, do i want yeah <laughs> it's like wearing your seatbelt. Okay, you you don't need a seatbelt for probably ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time you drive. Right, but boy, that tiny tiny little bit of time you need it, you need it. You and really need it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a helmet on a bicycle or motorcycle. You you never need it until you need it. Um, so for me, I think when I talk about back safety uh, with kettlebells, interesting. I think barbells uh, are. I know a lot of people get hurt their backs doing barbell work. I know that, but I actually think they're uh, people intuitively figure out to be safer with barbells. Never has anybody said, "Toss me that three hundred pound barbell." 
Yeah, there's mm -hmm. yeah, right. Just the just the sheer look of it yeah. often causes people to say, "Yeah, hey, I should probably be a little bit more careful with this thing." Right. right. Yeah. 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 Good. Good question. All right. Yes. Yeah, so and safety questions are always good. We want you guys to be able to train with focus and intensity, but without injury. So mm. do appreciate that. All right, here we go. Next one coming up is from Anthony. He says he spars with a sword and shield. The guard position requires holding both in front, similar to hand position of old school boxers. How would you improve endurance for keeping the hands up? More sword and shield work. Specificity, specificity, specificity. specificity. I mean, you could, I mean, obviously double kettlebell front squats. Front the squat. rack hold is going to be your kind of closest rack. approximation, right? Yeah. Hell, you may be in rack deadlifts, you know. Um, but specificity is the, I mean, it, it, obviously anything would help. Any grip work would help. Any ab work would help. But, you know, and well, you might even want to try, you know, do you, do your fighting and then between your, you know, and then do a set of front squats, do your fighting front squats. That's sometimes help. Yeah. But yeah. That's what my old, my old school, you know, uh, Brian Petty is one of the guys that prepped me for my RKC. Um, that's, that's pretty much what he would do in his, you know, his bare knuckle boxing training. It'd be bag work, something with heavy rack, usually front squats, right? Or just rack holds straight up bag work. Something with heavy extended racks. And I get like, yeah. So like you're never going to beat specificity for anything. This is like the, yeah. the I mean, great unicorn that people keep chasing that you're going to find some exercise that is better than just doing the specific activity. It, it doesn't exist. But, you know, getting very strong with heavy rack holds for an extended period of time, yeah, I'll probably, probably help a bit. I help a little bit. Yep. You know, it, it always reminds me of the rope-a-dope uh, Muhammad Ali uh, against uh, George Foreman. Because Foreman was in outstanding shape, but Ali got him to, you know, punch his arms out. Uh, it's a, it's an amazing fight if you get a chance to see it. Foreman uh, has been knocking people out. You know, he was the Mike Tyson of his generation. And Ali just let him exhaust himself punching Ali's forearms. And uh, then it, I think it's in the seventh round. Uh, Ali comes out swinging and uh, Foreman can barely even pick his arms up. So even in, even at that level, you can, you can still outrun your gun, you know, <laughs> you know, you can, it's, I, I, and I'm just saying, even and no matter what you do, something's going to happen. That's still going to challenge you. Yeah. 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 Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Yeah. All right. Let's squeeze in a few more here. Great questions today. Good. Uh, yeah. Good variety uh, of different things. All right. Um, just a little comment here. I chef says, I think one of the best things about the kettlebell is the convenience and how much space you need to store it and use it. Yeah. In terms of like space requirements, to how much you get out of the thing that takes up that space. Yeah, it's, I think it's kind of hard to beat the kettlebell. It really is. It really, oh. is, it, I mean, I'm, I'm a kettlebell guy, right? At the end of the day, like, I feel bad. Like, sometimes I'm just I'm just honest about it in a way that I think a lot of tribalistic, dogmatic people in the fitness space can't be honest about anything. I, use, I love kettlebells. I've, I, of course I do. The channel's about kettlebells. I think it's phenomenal. And I think for most people, most of the time, it's, like, probably the best, most practical tool you can use. I agree. Um. But, it, but there are a few gaps. There just are a few gaps that yeah. I think it's important to just, you know, have them plugged. Yeah, so go ahead, Dan. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, the, so the other day I, I I was watering a house plant. I looked behind it, and I saw a 20-kilo kilo bell uh, in my living room behind the mm -hmm. house plant that I was using doing swings with. So the foot, it was a, I don't think it was a national championship. I, but it was funny. I was like, it was. I was. I had it up. I had it in my living room to watch a football game, and I forgot it was up there. I got a twenty kilo bell in my living room for about three weeks that I haven't even noticed. That's when you know a piece of equipment is small and compact. You know, I would have picked up if I had an Olympic bar there. You know, I would have noticed uh, uh, a pull up and dip rack. Yeah, it was just kind of funny. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I, I I don't know if it's gotten better or not, Dan, because over the years I've just progressively disassociated myself from certain, you know, fitness clicks and stuff like that. Yeah. But there was a time when even in the kettlebell world, like it was the kettlebell or death for a lot of people. And there were so many preposterous and exaggerated oh, claims I got, that were made. Yeah, I got uh, uh, an angry email from uh, a certain person in the kettlebell community whom I won't talk about ever if I can help it. Who got on me for using uh, bands, a rubber band, uh, you know, a train, a Dynamax train band mm -hmm. on kettlebells? It, it, that's how I, with my athletes, I, I can't do all those. You know, the the spike swings. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way I'm gonna do those for everybody. So we use bands. There are no bands in kettlebell. Yeah, there are no. Posture. There's no. But here's the weird thing: same person wants to have the pull up as one of the tests. Well, I, there are no pull-ups in kettlebells, right? Well, and then the, remember the pavelizer. Well, the pavelizer was fine, but not the pull-up rack. Well, yeah, pull-up rack is fine, but not the yeah the. the, 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 the this yeah. is odd, unquestioning and allegiance I, people had. Yeah. I refuse to. I feel like I've been a few times in my life. I I wouldn't say I, I've been in a cult, but I've been. I've been around and, and, and involved in groups. Hanging around the edges, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I got to tell you, and to be honest with you, when you're coaching football, you you you, you really start to... Oh, sure. Start, mm -hmm. And you can't help yourself. It's just, you know, because it's so... Yeah, I mean, things like that just sort of unfortunately do but trend not, in that direction sometimes, you know. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, the thing with the kettlebell, if you get like that, I just, you know, for, for me, and I think what we do, Dan, is, is always just trying to be as honest and helpful to people as possible if the kettlebell is the best solution which i think often it is or it's a yeah. very good one we're, that's what we're going to help you do it but you know if you've got a goal or a question where it's okay you could use a kettlebell but this over here might be a, a better so we're going to tell you that too but there are certain circles where that latter you know be even suggesting that there might be some other option was uh, of course uh uh, and yeah, you know, an offense that would get you excommunicated. But then, if you talk like that, like once you get out in the real world, like you're just going to look like an ass, right? You're going to be talking about like how beastly you get with the kettlebell. Like go into a powerlifting gym, friend, and see how beastly you are with your kettlebell. <laughs> it's going to get your ass kicked, right? And then you're just gonna you're just gonna look like a fool, right? Uh, so I just, at the very least, I just try not to look foolish. If I if I just try not to rush into looking like a complete ass, if I can help it. It's my general That's policy, right? Outstanding point. It's mm -hmm. interesting because I think both of us are toolboxes and carpenters. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's that we have this whole toolbox of things. A screwdriver is so much better than a hammer uh, for certain things. It right. just is. And, and and I'm not saying to the hammer, I don't love you anymore. It's just this tool is better for this job. Um, I, I like your point. In fact. Everything when we get questions, very often I think our, our gentle listeners are trying, and I get it too. So don't don't worry, I'm not. They're looking for the perfect the perfect program. Uh, Dan, what if I did? You know, uh, I, I, you, the workout calls for two sets of seven. What if I did two sets of eight? That's fine. Oh yeah, but it's not the program you wrote. It's fine. It doesn't it doesn't matter. You're good. Remember, folks. It's five by 52. It's three by 52. How many times a week you train? It's uh, I had a nice conference. Uh, Mike made a good point yesterday. I thought it was really good. So we're doing some very light, lots of volume uh, presses. And if most people come into the gym and see me pressing this weight, they would be embarrassed for me. Mike's point was great. He goes, two months from now, we're going to be pressing some big loads overhead. And that is something I want to share with everybody. Mike and I are doing this workout and we're investing two months into it. Just two months, which is mm -hmm, nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the idea is if you see the first week of a two month program, everyone's going to be disappointed. Now think about the opposite. I'm going to sign up for PR nine, 3000 and I'm going to get all these DVDs and it cost me 300 bucks to get them from uh, Lean Body 4000, okay? Yep. I get all these DVDs. I get all the things. I get the menu. I get the thing. 
I do the first workout. It's way too hard. I never put the thing back on again. People want hard the first week. It's unsustainable. If you're on a date with somebody and it's the worst date ever, and then she calls you up a few days, this is a true story, and asks you out, and you go on a date and it's actually nice, then, then keep going out with her. But if you keep having crappy after crappy after horrible dates and time together, maybe this, you know, maybe it's not a good relationship for you. Something you to know? think about. Something to think about. Yeah, sorry, way too much. Yeah. Great. Uh, here's a question. Yeah, I want to take this one because this is, yeah. I think this, is a, okay. uh, this will be a helpful one. Uh, Arigit says, hey, are renegade rows useful with the kettlebells or should one stick to the rows with just with one kettlebell? And I, this is a good question because it, it's clear that the, the, that the answer will depend on what are you doing it for? If you're looking for a good back exercise, I think the renegade row is sort of at the bottom of the barrel, right? Like it is, it is not a good back exercise. You're going to be super limited on load. You're not going to get much of the, the stretch. It is a, I'll, I'll say, I, I think it is a terrible back exercise, right? I mean, it'll do something for you, right? But like in the hierarchy of all the things you could do for your back, the renegade low, row is definitely down on the list of, you know, exercise selection for me. If you're just looking for like a general plank stability variation exercise that you throw into a complex or fun where hopefully you don't fall over and need serious orthodontia, then we can talk about the renegade the renegade row. But most of the time, it's not an exercise that I program with any regularity and especially not for serious back strength or back training. Dan, anything you... <laughs> yeah, I I remember when that thing showed up and it was the... It was the uh, oh, it was the exercise of the of the day for a while. Everybody loved it. Because, anyway, I mean, it, it looks cool, right? Like, for people who don't know the renegade row, it's where you're on the plank and the two kettlebells and your row one kettlebell from the plank as you're, you know, and this is important. If you're going to do it, you need to shift your weight and make sure you're pressing straight down into the center of the kettlebell. Because if you shift, you will be going orthodontia. You'll find out that orthodontia. Oh, you could even break the wrist. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah that, um, I mean, we're, we're back again to the Frankenstein monster stuff. You know what? Uh, I don't know of an ex. I truly, I, I'd have to spend a long time thinking about an exercise that has absolutely no value anytime for anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a, we have a, we have this swath of, of choices and it comes down to, you know, sometimes it's not even what's best at the moment, what's appropriate, you know? Yeah, so right, right, right. I, I, I liked what you said. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you're going to make, if you're going to be on the Mr. Olympia stage with a 16 kilo kettlebell as your only tool. I just yeah, don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, but boy, you could probably get in pretty good condition with just a sixteen kettlebell, a kilo kettlebell, and so that's 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 the rub I always have. Um, you know, I mean, you know, someone wrote a really negative thing about mass made simple. That's not. And they said, nice. you know, you know, competitive bodybuilders use leg presses, and there's no leg presses. It's like, yeah, well, competitive bodybuilders also probably without drugs wouldn't look as good as any of you think uh, yeah. uh it's shocking i mean when i was young uh, a bodybuilder told me that he made some money in a contest and he said that the amount he made wasn't even enough to cover his drugs for a month and at the time it was a lot it was what i made my first year as a teacher is what he made for his place at this competition mm. Mm. Let it be known, kids. Brazil nuts can only take you so far. All right. Brazil well, nuts, folks. Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts. Get them at Costco. When is that advertising money going to come in, Dan? I mean, this a while. I still, yeah, yeah. I still don't have that yet. All right. Let's take one or two more, and then we got to wrap this party up. Um, the good stuff here. All right. You know, here's we go to our friend Joel. He wants to us to come to Wales. I've never been to Wales. I'd be willing to go to Wales, but I would need some something enticing. Is the food good in Wales? I don't really hear about the food over there, Mike. Uh, uh, yeah, it. They, they it's good in Wales. Sell me on Wales before we take. This well, away. they have uh, in Wales. They have. I don't know what they call them. If they call uh, Joel, are they called pasties? Pasties. Oh. Uh, those little uh, 
vegetable and meat pies. I think those yeah, are the I, ones I, I, I can remember. get into a good. I can get into it. But uh, where I actually I ate uh, a gourmet meal in uh, in Wales. Uh, if if you know where the mock loop is, Joel, um, there's a place called the uh, the the deacon the deaconry the, or something like that right next to it. One of the best meals I've ever had in my life, and uh, it was all local food. It was really quite good. But uh, let's get back. Yeah. And all right. So, so he wants to know. Hey, he's doing a. He's getting in the habit of ten minutes of swings on one day and ten minutes of push-ups on the next. Are there any issues with that general approach? Just. 10 minutes of swings one day, 10 minutes of swings push-ups the other day. No, I mean, if that's, if that's what you got time, if that's what you want to do, if that's what you're going to. Swings and push-ups are a pretty decent. I mean, little deep push-ups push-ups yeah. are, those, I mean, those are, I mean, that takes me back to the uh, original Coyote Point Kettlebell Club where we basically just mastered and swings and push-up workouts, um, which later on developed into the humane burpee. Thank you, Dan Martin. Uh, thank you, Dan. Yeah. Awesome. All right, here's a a question about my original book, and uh, he wants to know, is the great fitness book with the worst possible title, which was Dan's Review, is it still relevant? Any updates or changes you would do for an imaginary second edition? Well, the book is still selling, and I think selling pretty well from what I understand. Wiley still prints it. They haven't asked me to do a second edition or anything. I wish they would so we could change that awful title. You did the hole-in-one book, though, didn't you? Yeah, so I did follow-up books that took some of the – sections of the previous and mashed them up with some other stuff. Um, it's funny that paleo all in one book, Dan, I don't think I ever even read it. You know, I, I send in my stuff and I was just like, okay, there you guys go. Uh, so I don't even know what the finished project uh, looks like. And yeah, when I people don't know. People ask me like uh, people write compilation books. So they'll ask for a chapter or two. Uh, and there's sometimes you're quite good. Mm-hmm. And then I'll get a copy of the book and I'll open it up. And like, I often don't even remember writing these things because that I wrote it six years, five years ago, you know, with Kelly getting ready to graduate from. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. I was like, Whoa. Yeah. Uh, but to answer this question really quick, I mean, we've talked about it here. Dan gave me amazing feedback when he ran the program. Uh, the biggest thing I would change is some of the exercise selection. There's some moves in there that just, I would not like the, the one arm chin up. Don't do one arm chin ups. Don't even bother with it. Uh, yeah, so I would scrap that. It's not like that's a major feature of the program, but I just wouldn't even include hey. that at all as an option anymore. Uh, I would adjust uh, some of the volume on some of the uh, on some of the uh, more intense metabolic condition. I would adjust it downward. Uh, that was one of your points of feedback, Dan. So I'd I'd, I'd dial back some of the uh, uh, the volume on the conditioning. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I stand by most of what's, I don't think you're going to go wrong at all if you grab that book, but there are some, some fine tuning, uh, that I've, you know, through the years of my own, uh, refinement, uh, and, and just learning things and hearing how people did on the program, including Dan was, again, he gave you the, the best earliest feedback, the best feedback still on that book. But what did I do, Patrick? You did the program. Which was amazing. And you did it right away. So like I couldn't have asked for a better review right off the bat. Because that book hit, you know, hit the presses. Dan runs the full thing. It gives me 180 views. days, folks. Yeah, not, it's dude, it's not a it's not a light, it's not a light thing. This is a serious program in there. So uh can I tell you what I'd like you to do? Write this down. Yeah. So on all the strength workouts, just move to two, three, five. So instead of the the lower rep, yeah. He did the yeah. one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Hey Dan Herman, good to see you, buddy. Uh, but I would go two, three, five, two, three, five, maybe two, three, five, uh, yep. on a, you know, maybe a, a higher volume day. Uh, and then the other, uh, the other thing I really, is you had too many kettlebell complex. Variations. That's the thing I'm telling I'm about toning down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say like, if just go back to that question we had earlier, even if you just had that, okay. The person asked the question, that's why it's fresh in my mind. You have cardio clean. Uh, a light and humane uh, burpee version, the ABC workout. So maybe probably start off with one or two variations. Add a third, keep the first. Uh, add a second, keep the first. Add a third, keep the first. Two. Maybe get to five. Yeah, that's good. But total variations, but they're so that there's no thinking involved. You know, yeah, uh, work work the body, not the mind. Yeah, right. if you're, you know, if you're doing, you know, pick up the bell with your left hand, do, you know, five swings with the, uh, five snatches, uh, five front squats, uh, 
five cleans, um, five, you know, suitcase uh, deadlifts. The, the problem with something like that is you're looking at the chart, trying to see what comes up next. Um, boy, uh, the warmups, uh, I, I still think the warmups have great value. Uh, I think I sent that my, my notes back to you a few weeks ago, didn't I? Before. I have to I have to double check, but that could be that could be fun to just throw those up on a blog Wait. real quick. If anybody if Wait, anybody wants that yeah. book <laughs> and you want to help me get my thirteen cent royalty, it is the title is Paleo Workouts for Dummies. Still the worst title in the world, but remember this book was launched at the height of the Paleo craze, and the publisher insisted insisted on putting Paleo in the title, despite the fact that this has nothing to do with Paleo anything. It's just a kettlebell. It's a kettlebell training book. It's a kettlebell in body weight training book. Uh, and so, you know, I'm happy to say that looking back, I stand by pretty much everything. It's just a matter of fine tuning and refinement around Patrick, the edges. Yeah. Um, oh, they're not gonna be able to do, it. uh, there's a limit on how much I can put in there, but I just put, I just put in an example of it. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. So well, thank you, wanna, you, Dan. Do you mind saving that over? Yeah. Let me see if I can, uh, copy and paste this into the comments. So here you guys go. You get at least a snippet there before we close out. Uh, there it is. Okay, it sh it spread it out over various comments. We'll let the we'll let the readers sort out yeah, that. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can. yeah, you guys can screenshot and do a little think in there and whatever. Yeah, you'll figure you. Yeah, y'all figure it out. Y'all do some figuring. Um, <laughs> yeah, great. I mean, uh, that's that's the nice thing, you know. When I uh, sometimes when you're like, for example, I uh, there was a whole bunch of questions on my on my forum about uh, no, not mine on. Strong first. Oh, God, the strong first form. Gee. Uh, uh, Nobody wants to buy the book. No one wants to follow up, but they just they want to make a 10,000 comments on it. But I said in the book, in Easy Strength Omni book, Easy Strength Omni book, great book. Uh, I said, if I could do it all again, I would just tell everybody, it's just three sets of three every workout. No, no variation at all. And the guy was like, well, why, you know, and it was good. Actually, this person was kind of nice. It was like, yeah, help, help me here. Help me there. And when I say something like that, it's because I'm frustrated with all the questions. It's, it's not that the program I wrote was terrible. It was, it was, it's fine. And it's true. It's real. It's how it works. But you can only answer the same 300 questions so many times and not go, come on, people. The reason I say something is because I'm, uh, I'm frustrated. Uh, yeah. Know. Right. Right. The right, number right. one thing I notice with uh, almost everybody is they want to talk. They want all the specifics of a program without actually even trying the first minutes. You know, um, Dick Notmeyer told me to buy this protein. I bought this protein. I am currently drinking this protein. I bought, couple cases of it because i want to test it out this is <laughs> it's going to work <coughs> yeah i'm trying to really up my protein okay sometimes you have to get the plan do the plan then review the plan yeah you gotta uh, do it first plan the dive dive the plan yeah dive the plan love it love it love it love it all right then before we go what else do you what else are you working on? How's the book coming along? Give us the, the I words. should have the book finished. Uh I could probably have it done in a couple of days if I actually didn't get sick to my stomach doing it. Uh for those of you who've ever had a chance to write a book, especially uh a, a general uh a general audience like this book, it's just it is frustrating. You just I tough, worry about tough stuff. Writing a book is hard, hard, hard work. It is difficult stuff. At least it is for me. Uh, yeah, uh, I would say uh, overall uh, things are very good. Um, I, I've got a couple of workshops coming up. I'm doing one down in Las Vegas for Parker University. Very excited about this one. And then I'm heading down to Tempe. Uh, I'm trying to do a whole bunch of. Uh, so one of the things, folks, uh, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I go to workshops, and I sit in workshops and I take notes. Uh, I I'm. I, I drove Laurie Draper crazy because I like to sit in the front row uh, at workshops and uh, poor thing. She doesn't like me, uh, but uh, I'm doing, I'm going down to Tempe for a workshop. Uh, I'll be going down for a series uh, of workshops here in the next couple of 
over the next few months. Um, I've got, uh, I've got, I think I announced last week that I've got some good news in my life with Ellen and Rose on our way uh, be here, be here in August. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, Lindsay, let's keep it, keep it on our ramps. Uh, pregnant. Um, uh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Things are good. Uh, we've had a lot of rain here in Utah and a lot of snow. So this is the second year in a row. Uh, we're starting to nudge our ways away from that really tragic drought, uh, the Great Salt Lake has been held back from water for generations, and we're paying a price for that now. But hopefully, we'll get that. Uh, you know, we'll uh, get some get some more water and snow. It's been great. Um, my throwers are doing so well, and ah, things are good. You know, good. I love to hear it, Dan. Uh, love the insights. Thank you as always, gentle listeners. Thank you for the incredible conversation and questions. If you like what we're doing here, a few favors to ask. Hit the like button. Simple. Take two seconds. Hit the subscribe button. Leave your thoughts and comments afterwards. Helps the channel grow. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.